Paper 7, Literatures of India, Part 2. Session number 51. Session title, About the Nun and Analysis. This is an image of the cover book. About the novel, Raja Shara Shema, that's mother of thousand years ago, is a 1974 Bengali novel written by Raymond Maxwell Awadi and Mother Shweta Devi. It was written in 1974 and the background of the Maxwell Revolution in its images. Translated into English by Salim Mahmoud Nadyan, it was published in 2000. Mahashweta Devi in most of the words represents the tribal communities in the novel, Mother of Father Lady Pro, depicts the life of which of our own Siddhartha, 52 years age, living in Calcutta. Let us now look into the plot of the novel. Mother of 1084 is a story of a mother whose son, Pops Nabu. Was brutally killed by the state because of his ideology of advocating the brutal killing of class enemies. For our greatest, the state prompted a revolutionary within the party. The story starts on the eve of Brati's death anniversary when Sujata reconnects her son, starting from his home. She meets Brati's close uncompromise and tries to justify Brati's actions and his revolutionary mentalities. Throughout the story, she is portrayed as a strong woman who fought against the arts. She is advised to forget her son, as people like her son are what are often called cancerous growth on the body of democracy. It's a story of a mother as she relives years later the death of her son in the political upheaval that left almost no home untouched. Mother of 1084 also portrays the other faces of the human stories that emanated from the restless political adventure of the vibrant Bengali youth, which was ruthlessly cowed by then Congress government until the Communist Party displaced them, and who then again themselves ruthlessly cowed their opponents, the same Bengali youth. Mahashweta Devi says in an interview that this story is about the awakening of an a political mother. She further explains Sujata in Mother of 1084 is essentially apolitical. Yet, as she reaches towards an explanation of the death of her son killed in the 70s, she too finds the entire social system cadaverous and as she takes a closer look at society, she finds no legitimacy for his death. His statement by Devi can be used as a vantage point to explain the transformation and self-liberation that Sujata undergoes within the novel. How Sujata is transferred from being an a political mother to political one. How she becomes a socially and politically conscious member of the society. This narrative creates revolutionary ability for Sujata to go against her own belonging. Her husband represents the existing state power and authority and his house is representative of the existing society of West Bengal of 1970s. Sujata represents the oppressed and marginalized section of the society. How as a woman who remains on the margins of the society, she questions the people belonging to the center. In the first chapter, we discuss the structure of this novel, and in the second, we will discuss the first next two chapters of the novel, and in the upcoming session, we will be discussing Sujata's complete transformation.
Let us now look into the structure of the novel. The entire story unfolds within the time frame of a day. The chapters are divided into the four phases of a day, morning, afternoon, late afternoon, and evening. The narrative may look linear because of this division, but it's not a linear and chronological narrative. Sajata goes back in time through her reminiscences, and this disrupts the linear narrative. As opposed to linear clock time, the story shows a different notion of time, time as being circular. The time that Sujata experiences in the novel is not a linear one, but a circular one that has no starting and no end. She moves in and out of present reality and visits her past through flashbacks and through recourse to her memory. Each chapter of the novel helps in the further development of Sujata's consciousness as it helps her to reconstruct her disordered and fragmented life. Every time she glances back at her own past and her son's past by visiting Somu's mother and Nandini, she realizes the uselessness of her present existence. Sujata is transformed by understanding the revolutionary career of her son, which was always in the dark of her while her son was alive. She now not only understands Brati's commitment to the Naxalite movement, she also understands the sufferings of people like Nandini and Somu's mother and in this process understands the meaning of her own life. Before Brati's death, she had been a dependent, weak, non-questioning and a political wife and mother. But after Brati's death, she becomes an independent, strong-willed, politically and socially conscious individual. The novel's action takes place on January 17th, the day Brati was born, the day Brati died, and the day chosen for Sujata's youngest daughter to lease engagement to Tony Kapadia. During the whole day, Sujata travels back to her past by taking the recourse to her memory. This single day, 17 January, also brings about complete transformation and self-liberation of Sujata. Analysis of the novel. The novel opens on the morning of January 17, when Sujata broods back on the day when Brati was to be born she remembers how the labor pains had started in the bathroom, how she alone had to pack her bag, call for a taxi, and had to rush to the hospital. She is reminded of the jealous and hostile nature of her mother-in-law and the cold behavior of her husband. They did not care about her critical condition. Now, she clearly saw this solitary existence she had been living in the Bernard's house. She realizes the lusty nature of her husband, how he didn't care about the bringing up of his children and so preferred sleeping on the second floor of the house so that his sleep should not be disturbed. She remembers how whenever he felt that Sujata was healthy again to bear a child, he would impregnate her without even considering her will. He was never around when she had to deliver the child. That was the reason why Sujata was angry with the doctor when he had asked her about her husband. As soon as they were married, Dibyanath had started an affair with his typist. But when Brati was about to be born, Sujata had felt a special love for him when she had not felt for any other child of hers. When she realized that her child's life was in danger, she developed a special bond with him even before his birth. Brati was the only child of hers with whom she had a special relationship. If anyone in the whole family could be different, it was Brati. From his birth, Brati was different from all of the children of Sujata. He had been rebellious against the discipline and the ideology of his family. Like all of the children, he would not turn up for breakfast at the given time and so as a punishment was not allowed to have his breakfast at the dining table. He would then sit on a stool in the kitchen and have his breakfast given to him by him. 
Till later in life, Dibya Nath had scolded the boy and given him the name of Mama's boy. When Brati had to be given a separate room to sleep, Sujata had insisted to Dibya Nath that Hem should be allowed to sleep with him, for she knew that Brati would feel scared sleeping alone. Twenty years later, when Brati died, the whole family disowned him. Dibya Nath had not allowed any to claim his body. Instead of grieving for his son, he had made sure the next day's newspaper did not print Prati's name. He had made sure that his car was not parked outside Kantapukur, the police mark where Prati's dead body was laid. Sujata is angry at such a behavior of her husband. She considers him dead from then on. She forgets about the social respectability and goes against her husband her family and the state itself to claim the dead body of her son. Sujata was not even allowed to cry for her son and express her grief at his death. All the memories of Brati were locked up in a room on the second floor, whose keys Dibyanath had kept to himself. All his memories were wiped out from the household so that the respect of this house could remain intact. The whole family had disowned Brati because he had refused to accept the value system of the present state. He had questioned the decadent and the self-indulgent society. Sujata now realized that her son was not the antagonist of the story, but had died because he had lost faith in the social system. In the chapter named Mani, Sujata for the first time realized that Prati and she were the excesses in the family of Dibyanath because they couldn't adjust to the ways of this house and so were suffering equally. They both could not be as happy as the other members of this household because they could never be part of the ideology that shaped this household. This first chapter is the beginning of Sujata's realization of being the other in the system. From then onwards, her transformation begins, even though in this chapter, this is only in its initial stage. She starts to become ideologically dislocated. Transformation occurs internally in this chapter. In the second chapter, afternoon, Sujata visits Somu's house. Somu was one of the revolutionaries of the Naxalite movement who had been killed along with Brati. Brati had been the part of this house on the night of his death. Sujata visits Somu's mother in order to recollect the last few moments of Brati's life, of which she had never been a part. She learns that this part of her son's life was never within her range and reach. This kind of a household could never be imagined by her because of her bourgeois background. Sujata could never imagine a world which could be so full of poverty and Somu's house is described as a ramshackle house with moss on the roof, cracked walls patched up with cardboard. Sujata comes into contact with this world of slum dwellers that was degrading and full of filth. The conditions of this household awaken her to another form of reality. She realizes a different possibility of existence. She becomes somewhat jealous of Somu's mother, who was aware of Brati's spontaneous and revolutionary career. Sujata, even though so close to Brati, could never be part of this reality of her son. In the Bianath's household, Brati was someone else and could not be as spontaneous as he had been at Somu's house. In his father's house, he could never be himself. In this chapter, Sujata's conviction for transformation becomes more certain. She learns another form of reality and becomes aware of the injustice that was part of the society she lived in. She also becomes aware of the inequality that is so prevalent in the society of hers. The visiting at Somu's house becomes enabling for her social and political transformation. 
she becomes socially conscious and learns that the world outside her own house is very different. In the ch third chapter, the late afternoon, Sujata visits Nandini, who was one of the living revolutionists of the Naxalite movement and was also Brati's girlfriend. It's through Nandini that Sujata learns about the Naxalite movement, its causes and aims. Nandini tells her how Brati and other revolutionaries had been killed and how they had been betrayed by one of the comrades. She also informs Sujata about the internal workings of the movement and the revolutionaries were fighting against the existing world order, which had become repressive and destructive for the poor and oppressed sections of society. During this revolutionary existence, along with Nandini, Brati envisioned a world that would have all political games ended and where all human beings would be happy and equal. By speaking to Nandini, Sujata learns the reason for Brati's rebellion act against the decadent system of his father's house and in turn his rebellion against the existing political and social ideology of West Bengal. Sujata tells Nandini that I had just begun to realize how little I knew Brati. The transformation that had only been in its initial stages in the previous chapters comes to a full circle in this chapter. The political and social consciousness that has started developing at Somo's house becomes more developed and apparent here. Now Sujata has completely become a member of society who is both required to be politically as well as socially conscious. She has become completely ideologically away. Now she no longer remains an apolitical mother. The internal as well as external transformation is complete. This will become more apparent in the next chapter of this novel. The new Sujata, who has become self-liberated, will now speak and act. But this will happen only in the Vyanath's house. And so Sujata now leaves Nandini's house and returns to her own house to enact her transformation there. Only in chapter 4 evening do we see a new Sujata who has now completely transformed. This transformation is reflected in her thoughts as well as her actions. As soon as she enters the house, Dibyana scolds her for being late. She for the first time speaks up and leaves Dibyana shocked. She confronts him for being an irresponsible man, husband and father. She makes him aware that it was he who was on the wrong side. From the beginning, she openly questions his libertine relationships. He was able to maintain such relationships through the encouragement of his mother and his children, particularly Huli. It was he who had been adulterous and disloyal to her. She had done her bit of duty really well, and so he had not right to question her. Dibyana had no answer to all these questions, and so he left with no other option but to leave. Now tamely wiping the nape of his neck, she not only questions Dibina but also questions other family members. When her daughter Tuli asks her for her entire jewelry, Sujata gives her all the jewelry she had got from Dibina but refuses to part with the jewelry her father had given to her. She becomes more assertive and determined now. Sujata even rebukes her daughter Nipa for her behavior. Her whole body and soul instructs her not to take part in Tuli's engagement. But out of her moral duty, she decides to be part of the ceremony. Even though Sujata had now become completely transformed, still, she decides to fulfill her moral responsibility towards her family. She decides to fulfill the role that had been allotted to her by the society she lived in. She wears a white sari for the ceremony signaling her transformed self. Her appendix burst out and she dies. She could no longer remain alive in the house of Dibyana as she now realized the hypocritical and repressive nature of this household. Brati had died because of loss of faith in the existing system and so she too had to die. 
She had no other option apart from dying because she was very weak and old. Only death could help her to unite with Prati. Death was the only possible resistance that Sujata could take up. By giving such an ending to Nava, Mahashweta Devi shows us that within this kind of society, a woman could only resist by dying. She remains on the periphery from the beginning to the end. Being on the boundaries of the society, she could see the loopholes in the networks of the society. It is true that Prati had rebelled against the existing social order, but Mahashweta Devi decides to make Sujata, a woman, the protagonist of this novel. It is so because sooner or later, Brati could have become an agent of chain, but being a man, he could himself become an agent of power in a couple of years. If the Naxalite movement was not able to overthrow the existing social order, sooner or later, it could itself become a repressive and tyrannical regime. The revolutionary politics works in such a way the revolutionary soon tastes the glory of power and in the process turns out to be a dictator himself. And so Devi had to create Sujata, a woman to be her protagonist as Devi herself was aware that Sujata could never be an agent of change within that patriarchal society. If she could not be the agent of change in the society, so she could not be an agent of power and hence could never become a dictator. And for her to take the center stage, Brati had to die. And to complex the situation further, Devi shows us that Sujata could become a politically and socially conscious being only after the death of her son Brati. Before his death, she never tried to understand the society around her. Only after her death does she understand the hypocrisy of the existing world order and hence his death also becomes an ending experience of her heart. Thank you.